You're entirely bonkers. But I'll tell you a secret. All the best people are. Welcome back to Howdy Sailing. Thank you so much for joining once again. These videos are made possible by my patrons as well as my coffee supporters. So a giant, giant thank you to them as well as my channel subscribers. Rudders 101. After hull strength and integrity, rudder strength and integrity as well as build is the most crucial component of an ocean going vessel. Before you focus on the type of rudder, skeg hung, spade rudder, full rudder, or outboard rudder, it's important to understand them, what causes them to fail, and how to properly assess your own rudder. I can assure you that 75% of people currently sailing have no idea what's in their rudder or how it was even built. Today, we will cover the different types of rudders, what causes the most failures, as well as what's inside them and how each is built. Knowing this will not only help you maintain your rudder, but it will also help you prolong the lifespan of your rudder. Is the stock aluminum, stainless steel, or composite? Solid or hollow? A thin wall aluminum stock might be great for bay sailing. However, it is unlikely to last long in heavy weather and will not survive a bump into a coral head. You need to understand your rudder's strengths as well as weaknesses so you can keep from overexerting it and causing failure someday down the road at the most optimal incorrect time. Murphy's Law 101. If it's going to fail, it will be failing at the absolute worst time. Now, there are numerous articles and discussions out there about rudders, but they all seem to focus on not having one or losing one. I would like to help you from being in that position altogether. That's kind of like continually having a discussion on what to do if you run out of gas. How about you just don't fucking run out of gas in the first place and avoid the whole issue altogether? That seems like a much, much smarter option in my opinion. So, is rudder failure simply a consequence of putting too many miles on a rudder? No. It's only that the more you use something, the faster its weaknesses are exposed. The real issue is that the construction on many vessels is simply prone to failure. There are basically four ways that rudders fail. Knowing what these are will help you spot early signs of issues and ways to maintain your rudder for a prolonged lifespan. First on the list, stock failure. Most rudders are constructed around a solid or hollow stainless steel or aluminum stock. This tube or bar connects the rudder to the boat's steering mechanism. In the case of a spade rudder, it also attaches the rudder to the vessel itself. Stocks can fail in several ways. However, it's all related to the same thing, strength or a lack thereof. If a rudder is too strong, it can pry open the hull of a vessel versus bending in the event of a grounding or collision. This makes spade rudders on lightly built boats more vulnerable to a bent stock. The rudder is sacrificed to save the hull. Most people simply cannot even grasp this concept. They cry about skeg hung rudders and I can't have a skegless rudder. Bend the rudder, save the vessel. It makes a heck of a lot more sense to me than cracking a skeg rudder and cracking your vessel open. A bent metal stock can result in a rudder being jammed off center, which will simply make the vessel impossible to steer under sail. Now, composite rudders on the flip side will simply break rather than bend. Under normal operating conditions, a rudder stock is subject to repeated and reversing torsional stress, which can easily handle if sized correctly. However, as everyone who has twisted the head of an old screw knows, corrosion changes everything. Stainless steel, in particular, suffers when deprived of oxygen, which is exactly what happens up inside of a rudder tube full of stagnant seawater. This effect is exaggerated where the shaft comes in contact with a solid bearing surface, which rubs away the oxide film that protects the steel. Hidden from view, the stocks begin to corrode. Over time, its strength is compromised enough that an impact or a strong twist snaps it like a pretzel, and the rudder falls away. Many people spend 200 plus K to purchase vessels with a survey that I would consider more like a window shopping event than a survey. Sailing Atticus just had one of these walkthrough surveys, and as you can see, the results weekly due to a bad survey. If you're not checking your rudder and you don't know what to look for, you have no idea what's inside your rudder or how it was built or what it's actually looking like. So always make sure when you have a survey done, do some research on the rudder and figure out what type it does have on the vessel that you are looking at so you can know what to look for and spot signs of issues. Next up, framework failure. A rudder blade is not simply cast onto its stock like a popsicle. It's actually held in place by internal metal framework. In the weakest configuration, the stock extends only just below the top of the rudder where its end is welded to a mild steel plate, looking something like a bad ore. 
It doesn't take a materials engineer to predict what's going to happen as a four-foot rudder blade flexes this plate back and forth. The more common practice of spot welding metal bars like reverse tillers onto a stock that extends deep into the blade is better that in there are multiple welds to resist the twisting stresses and the continuous stock absorbs the bending stress. Also, the rudder will not necessarily fall away when these welds fail. Now, a well-engineered interior framework is made out of stainless steel rather than mild steel and is firmly attached to the stock with long, strong welds. However, even if the interior frame is a single stainless steel plate that is welded to the stock for almost its entire interior length, it is almost impossible to maintain a perfect seal between the composite blade and the metal stock. Water will eventually penetrate into the blade and then foster corrosion, especially where welding has altered the molecular structure of the metal. As the water inside the rudder is trapped, this type of deterioration continues unabated even if the boat is stored on the hard. If corrosion weakens the framework to its breaking point, rotating the stock will fail to turn the rudder blade. This is where actually digging into the boat you are considering purchasing is very important. You need to know what your rudder is made of and how it's made so you can attempt to spot possible issues long before purchasing a vessel. Next up, the lamination. Production fiberglass rudders are typically composed of a pair of molded skins bonded together like a clamshell over the metal framework with the interior void filled with plastic foam. If the peripheral bond securing the fiberglass blade fails, the skins will peel away and the foam will disintegrate. This seam can fail for a number of reasons. Because it was not bonded well, because the bonding flange is not wide enough, because an impact splits it like a seam on a peanut, or because the expansion of freezing moisture inside the rudder jacks the two halves apart. Now, if you live in a colder climate where it freezes every winter and you do need to pull your boat out of the water and winterize your vessel, this can happen as well with the freezing temperatures. It will cause the water inside of the rudder to expand and crack the exterior shell. Up next, the stock on an inboard rudder. Typically, it penetrates the hole via a laminated tube. The interior surface of the tube serves as a bearing surface for the turning stock, with a second fixed bearing up high on the stock countering the bending loads. Some rudder tubes are fitted with a grease fitting or at least a grease cap that allows lubricant to be forced between the tube and the stock to reduce wear. While uncomplicated and durable, a raw tube can suffer wear, hastened by infrequent maintenance as well as grit finding its way into the tube. So what can we do? Well, knowing your rudder inside and out is very, very important and able to spot these issues as if you don't know what you're working with, it's very hard to spot them. So also routine maintenance, service the bearings, giving your rudder tubes and bearings a thorough high pressure flush every time the boat is hauled. If your rudder tube has grease points, give them a squirt of grease at least once a year. Roller bearings should be cleaned but never lubricated. Although a bit of grease on the bearing can retard corrosion and make future servicing easier. Worn bushings or bearing rollers should always be replaced. Check the seals. If the rudder tube does not extend well above the water line, there must be some effective way to keep the ocean out. This might be a stuffing box, a lip seal, or a rubber gaiter. Whatever method is used, it should be checked at least annually, preferably while the boat is moving at hull speed. Check the alignment of the rudder. A bent rudder will have been weakened, and straightening it will even weaken it more. The force that bent the stock may also have damaged the rudder's bearings, internal frame, outer shell, or even the structure of the hull and rudder tube. A spade rudder that is not vertical or does not rotate in place at the bottom of the blade requires careful and complete evaluation by a professional. Test for ease of rotation. Rudders should turn smoothly from stop to stop. If there's any roughness or drag, that suggests corrosion and other problems. Confirm strong stopping points. Rudder movement beyond around 35 degrees off center is undesirable. Drain. When sailboats are hauled out of the water, the rudder often drips long after the hull is dry, something that is not noticed by many sailors. Water inside the rudder is the enemy. It is corroding the metal framework and delaminating the blade. So in freezing weather, it will shatter things. When your boat is hauled, watch for continuing drips from the bottom. After the hull has been pressure washed and is dry, feel the bottom of the rudder. If it's wet, wipe it with a wet towel. Rust color is a clue as to what's going on inside. Now, if you own the vessel, what you can do is drill 1 8 inch holes in several locations on the rudder. These are easily repaired with a bit of epoxy putty. Water inside the rudder does not condemn it, but absence of water is reassuring. So drilling a few holes and finding out that your rudder is dry is absolutely something that is fantastic to know before planning a long crossing. Also, when you haul out your vessel, drop the rudder. You don't have to drop it much. It doesn't take much to do. However, drop the rudder, get a look at what's going on up top of the rudder in places that you cannot see normally. 
As mentioned at the beginning of the video, these videos are all brought to you by my patrons as well as my coffee supporters, so a giant, giant thank you to them. Consider becoming a patron. You do get access to our members area where I'm on daily to chat. I also offer one-on-one -on -one consulting if you're serious about getting on the water and getting started. You can become a patron and join our members area for as little as $10 a month. That's less than the price of Netflix and it's like 25 cents a day. Hop on over, join us on the members area. Come chat, say hi, let us know what you're all about and what your plans are. Hope to see you there and if you did like the video, please give it a thumbs up, subscribe, like, share, comment, all that good stuff, and I will see you on the next one.